Caroline is a senior from Virginia. She has a lot of experience with self-advocacy. Um, she was diagnosed with narcolepsy uh, as a young teenager after struggling with sleep and physical challenges that defied explanation. Uh, now she's a youth ambassador uh, for the Narcole Narcolepsy Network. We joke about this, I'm not gonna do well with that. Something it's a mouthful. <laughs> it is. Um, and she's advocated on Capitol Hill with the Rare Disease Legislative um, Advocacy Group. You can learn more about um, Caroline's work. She's going to be presenting immediately after this on a panel. Yep. And um, I know that the Narcolepsy, Narcolepsy Network also has a table, a booth? Yeah. Booth 631, oh. if you want to talk about narcolepsy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you could, because a lot of us aren't familiar really with narcolepsy. Um, can you tell us a little bit about narcolepsy and kind of how it would impact a student? So narcolepsy is a neurological sleep disorder, which is characterized by five major symptoms. There's excessive daytime sleepiness, which is normally the most prevalent symptom for patients. And it's the inability to stay awake. Not just that you're really tired, but you cannot stop yourself from falling asleep, no matter how much you care about your class. Then there's cataplexy, which is personally my largest symptom, which is temporary muscle paralysis caused by intense emotions, like laughter or shock. And then there are also disrupted nighttime sleep, which is when you lie in bed at night and you toss and you turn and you can't fall asleep, which is why you're so exhausted during the day. And then there are different kinds of dreams and hallucinations and sleep paralysis problems that also occur. And then you were mentioning, um, we were talking about one of, one of your friends or someone that you know, and his IEP goal specifically addressed his narcolepsy in a, in a particular way that I think others might learn from. Yes. Narcolepsy, you should absolutely get accommodations for. You can have, if you have four classes a day, he has his third class as a nap block. So if he's too exhausted to go to class, he just sleeps in the nurse's office, which is a common problem that narcoleptic people have. And then he makes up the coursework. He takes an online course over the summer to make up for what he misses. Yeah, that's a great strategy. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so what have you learned since you've started becoming an advocate and working on, on policy? So I've attended Rare Disease Week on Capitol Hill, and I'll also be attending the World Orphan Drug Congress in the very end of April. So I feel like I've learned that we as individuals with rare diseases can often feel like we're alone, but when you think one in 2,000 people has narcolepsy, you still have thousands of people who are standing with you. And rare diseases are by nature rare, but one in 10 people suffer from a rare disease. So together we have a lot of power that we don't realize. And I know you've been applying to colleges, and you're eagerly awaiting hearing, hearing back. Um, what do you plan to do in the future? Are you gonna carry on working in this, uh, this area of, of policy? I was recently made the lead youth ambassador at Narcolepsy Network. The youth ambassador program is a group of young people who have taught how to be advocates, and I'm in charge of like basically making sure that we're effective and that we're passing on what we know. So I'm definitely going to be continuing that in college. And I plan to go to college in D.C. if possible to study political science and neuroscience so that I can be an effective advocate with a scientific background. Well, you can see why I would be so proud um, to honor Caroline for her achievements um, and for advocating on behalf of hers um, and others' um, disabilities and issues. I'm delighted to present her with the Yes I Can Award.